So, good morning students. So, in the second part of the lecture, we are going to discuss about a technique that is called diaphragm wall construction. So, in this lecture, we are going to understand about what is a diaphragm wall and what is the typical construction sequence involved in the diaphragm wall construction. So, now let me move on to the next slide. So, in this slide, I give you a short introduction about what is a diaphragm wall. So, we will be understanding about what is a diaphragm wall. So, diaphragm wall is nothing but it is a continuous wall which is constructed in the ground to facilitate construction activities like this diaphragm wall. It acts as a, a retaining wall and it can be used as a cutoff provision for supporting deep excavation. So, this is used as a final wall for the basement. So, it is used as a final for basement as well as for the underground structures like the tunnels and shafts. And this is used as a separating structure between the major underground facilities. And this is used as an act of, uh, it is used as a form of foundation, especially it is used as a rectangular pile. So, in the next slide, we will understand clearly what is a diaphragm wall and what is it, what are its typical construction sequence clearly with pictures in it. So, here in this picture, you can on the right side of the slide, you can see this diaphragm wall. I hope you are able to see this diaphragm wall. So, this is called as the diaphragm wall. So, this diaphragm wall is nothing but a reinforced concrete structure <coughs> which is constructed in situ panel by panels. So, this is an RC wall which is constructed at the project site panels by panels. So, these walls are usually they are designed to a greater depth that is they can even go up to 50 meters. So, mechanical excavation method is employed for the construction of the diaphragm walls. So, now let us understand what is the typical construction sequence which is involved in the construction of the diaphragm walls. So, uh, let me just uh, uh, brief you on what are the steps involved in the construction of the diaphragm wall. <clears throat> so, the first step is the construction of the guide walls and the second step is excavation to form the diaphragm wall trenches. The third step is support the trench cutting using bentonite slurry and the fourth step is insert the reinforcement cages and placing of the concrete to support the wall panels. So now let me explain each step one by one in detail. So what is the first step here? The first step is the construction of the diaphragm wall, construction of the guide walls. So here in this picture, you can see this guide walls. So here also you can see the guide walls. So what is a guide wall? So guide wall is nothing but it's a two parallel reinforced concrete beam which is constructed along the sides of the diaphragm walls so that they can act as a base or they can act as a guide for the equipments like you know the clamshells for doing the excavation of the diaphragm wall trenches. So this is a reinforced concrete wall which is constructed for a depth of 1 to 1.5 meters. So, this is constructed only for a depth of 1 to 1.5 meters. So, here clearly you can see in this picture also like you know this uh, guide wall construction. So, the first step is you have to go for constructing the guide walls. Now, let us move on to the second step. What is the second step? In the second step, you have to do the excavation to form the diaphragm wall trenches. So, here you can clearly, you can see, you know, excavation is being done by using the, the equipment called as the clamshell. If the clamshell is not there, you can also use the other equipments like, uh, you know, like uh, other, anything like, you know, which is having a hammer which is fitted to the crane. So, uh, in case like while doing the excavation, if you come across <coughs> boulders, then in that case, the gravity hammers should be used. So, your second step is you need to do the excavation to form the diaphragm wall trenches. 
so this is the second step that is excavation to form the diaphragm wall trenches using the equipments like the clam shell so now the third step is you have to support the trench cutting using the the bento knife slurry that is <coughs> when you are doing the excavation so what you have to do you have to go for uh, like pouring the bentonite slurry so this slurry will help to uh, you know to give the stability to the soil and it prevents the collapse of the soil when you are doing the excavation so many of you having the doubt what is bentonite slurry so bentonite slurry is nothing but it's a kind of the clay which is mixed with a portable water so when you pour the uh, bentonite slurry then it is it is very easy to do the excavation process so, and also this uh, here in this picture you can see this uh, the bentonite plant so you can see uh, this is uh, nothing but uh, this is the bentonite silo <coughs> and here you can see this is the bentonite mixer and here you can see this is the desander and this is the slurry tank and you can see the uh, you know this is the pump, the pump which is used to for like you know pouring this bentonite slurry into the trenches so even you can also after the uh, process is over even you can displace this bentonite slurry out of the excavation trenches so your third step is you are supporting the excavation trench cutting by using this type of the clay that is called as the bentonite slurry. Next one, the fourth step. The fourth step, you know, this is called uh, uh, reinforcement cage inserting. So in the fourth step, what you have to do is you have to go for inserting the reinforcement cages and then placing of the concrete to support the wall panels. As you are constructing this retaining wall below the ground, panels by panels, so you are supposed to make the reinforcements in the form of the cages as you are seeing in the picture and it should be erected with the help of the crane and it should be inserted inside the trenches as you see in this picture. So, I hope you are able to understand the uh, how this reinforcement cages are erected and they are placed inside the trenches. So once this reinforcement cages are laid inside the excavation trenches, the next step is you have to do the concreting and the concreting is done through the tremi concreting pipes and the you can see in this picture how the concrete is poured inside this tremi pipe. So this is called as the tremi pipe. And then after that, after the concrete is hardened, then you can go for doing the, the subsecutive alternative panels. So these are the typical steps which is involved in the, the construction of the diaphragm walls. And here in this picture, you can clearly, you can understand the entire process of the diaphragm wall panels. And also you can understand how this diaphragm wall panels are joined. Because this is a continuous wall, so it is very difficult to, con to construct these walls in one stretch. So that is why we go for constructing this diaphragm walls in panels by panels, that is in the alternative panels. So we'll understand uh, like how we do this joining of the diaphragm wall panels. So, say for example, this is the panel 1 and this is the panel 2. So first we go for constructing and let us say this is the intermediate panel that is panel 7. So first we will go for doing the panel 1 and panel 2 and after completing this panel 1 and panel 2, we will come to this panel 7 which is the alternative panel. So here uh, at the ends you can find the sort of uh, stop end pipes. So you can see at the at each pan at, at the at, at each excavation trenches you can find the sort of the stop end pipes. So when you are doing the excavation, you have to go for inserting the stop end pipes. Okay, so both in uh, both in this trench as well as in this trench. So once uh, you have done the excavation, so what you can do, you can go for inserting this reinforcement cages. Then you can go for pouring the concrete with the help of the the tremi pipe. So when you pour, when you start pouring the concrete, then you can go for <coughs> 
uh, that is removing this stop in pipes. So when you remove that, when you displace the stop in pipes, what happens here in this area, you will get a semicircular groove. So on the both the ends of the excavation trenches, you get a semicircular groove. And once you start pouring the concrete, what happens? The bentonite slurry which you have poured inside the excavation trench, you know, it can be displaced, it can be displaced out with the help of the pipes because the density of the bentonite slurry is lower than the concrete. So when you pour the concrete, the slurry, like it will flow to the top and which can be collected through the pipe and this bentonite slurry can be used for the other project also. <clears throat> and after doing both these trenches, so what you can do and we can go for doing the alternative panels. So when you're doing this alternative panels, there is no need for inserting the stop in pipes. So you do the typical procedure, you do the excavation, go for inserting the reinforcement cages, then you do the concreting through the tremie pipe. So finally, if you see, you will get a continuous wall, continuous concrete wall, which is joined tightly by means of the semicircular grooves. So the stop in pipes are used for joining the diaphragm wall panels so that you get a continuous RC wall. And here in this picture, you can also see the Kelly bar. This is the crane boom. So this is, you can see the hydraulic grab is uh, used to for doing the excavation of the trenches. So this is the sequence which is involved in the diaphragm wall construction. Now let me move on to the, the advantages of the diaphragm wall. So this diaphragm wall, it can be used as a permanent structural wall and this is a water retainable wall and uh, for this wall, the only less temporary propping is required. And this can be installed for the deeper depths and for the load bearing elements. So you can use the diaphragm wall as a permanent wall. So this can be applied for the top down construction method. So usually I think you would have seen the bottom up construction method. This is a top down construction method because you are moving from the top and then you are going to the bottom. So this diaphragm wall is a rigid structure. So the ground movements induced by the basement excavation is very less when compared to the, the other flexible retaining walls. And also here, <coughs> the vibration and noise generated from the installation of the diaphragm wall is less than the other methods. So these are the advantages of the diaphragm wall. So this method of construction can be like suggested in the deep excavation uh, uh, in the deep excavation areas so where you can use this diaphragm wall as a permanent structure wall so this is all about the, the construction of the diaphragm wall and its construction sequence